AA Beyond Belief is a podcast by, for, and about people who have found a secular path to sobriety in Alcoholics Anonymous. You can't see me, but I'm um, doing my hands like a, an orchestra. <laughs> yeah, and I was just bobbing my head. I'm, I'm conducting like, the music. I'm like, oh, I, I like this. This is, you know, such a fun ditty. I love hearing that. Ditty, where did that come from? <laughs> Before we came on, I said I was telling Angela, you know, it's like um, I've been doing these podcasts for so long, and when I'm just doing them with just me and another person, and there's not a bunch of people watching on Facebook, it's like no no pressure or anything. But it's always so funny. Just before we start this podcast, I am all nerves. <laughs> <laughs> but here we are. Here we are. We'll manage. There's Bubbles. Bubbles blonde. Yeah. She's here every week. <laughs> As is Jackie. <laughs> and Jackie. Yep. Well, good to see you guys. So today, our topic, we're going to have two topics probably. We'll see how it goes. But the the main topic is going to be acceptance. And if we can't fill up the time, we'll go in there and maybe talk about service a little bit. But just to kind of kick it off, I will tell you that I don't think I ever thought about acceptance very much before I got into AA. I really don't. I just can't ever remember a time when it was important for me to stop and think about how well I'm accepting things. (laughs) It just wasn't. But by the time I got to AA, that's when I began to hear about acceptance quite a bit. In fact, during the first couple of years, and it might just have been a a fad that was going around AA at the time, but everybody loved that um, story in the big book, Dr. Alcoholic Addict. Mm-hmm. And in the third edition, it was on page 449. Mm-hmm. And now it's 417. Yeah, it's now 417. <laughs> At every meeting, somebody says, in my book, it was 449. And then yeah. somebody else says, for everyone else, it's 417. And it got to be so <laughs> bad that it's like, if, if someone thought you needed to accept something, they would just say 449. <laughs> 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 and then they would always say the the quote from that story, you know, that acceptance is the answer to all of our problems. Mm-hmm. And I don't know about that, <laughs> but at the time, uh, that's what that's what I would hear often. And a funny story, at least it was funny at the time when it occurred. I was um, with a couple of friends, and we were about to uh, we were taking a meeting somewhere at a, at a treatment center, and. Um, I had a problem of some sort. I always did back then. I was, there was always something going on that was bothering me. And my friend looked at me and he says, John, acceptance, the answer to all your problems. And I looked at him and I said, no, it's not. (laughs) And they just, they both started, everybody started laughing at me because it was just the expression on my face. And, and it was probably genuine exasperation from hearing that for all that, all that time. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. When we talked about, you know, the podcast and what I got out of it was the second topic that that you had mentioned. So I was kind of thinking about that. And then you posted acceptance and uh, and someone showed it to me. They're like, are, are, is this the one you're doing? And I'm like, I, I guess so. And, and so, yeah. So for the last couple of days, I've, I've been trying to accept that our topic tonight is acceptance. Is acceptance. Yeah, and uh, I'm not sure if I find that acceptable or not yet. No, I hear you. (laughs) But what's interesting, we're going to be posting a story on Sunday about um, acceptance. And it's actually actually the second story in the last couple of weeks that we've posted on acceptance. And this one, he's again taking a look at that story, Dr. Alcoholic Addict. And one interesting thing that that he's writing in, in this story is he is making this case that you know, no, acceptance really isn't the answer to all of our problems. In fact, it kind of goes contrary to, you know, what we recite in the serenity prayer, those of us who recite that, you know, because in the serenity prayer, we're, we're seeking the serenity to accept what we can't change. But we also are seeking the courage to change what we can and the wisdom to know the difference. And if all we did was accept what we can't change, and we didn't stop and think about what we could change and work to change it, what good would that do? Yeah. No, I, I'm I'm with you on that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, 
I, I guess when I was thinking about it this week, the reason why I, you know, was struggling with it is that, you know, thinking about, you know, the world and what's going on right now and, and uh, you know, how do you balance, you know, acceptance with, with action, you know, basically, I, maybe we should have named this one the serenity statement, which is <laughs> how most of us prefer to say it. It's a statement. Yeah. You know, because there is, you know, so little that we can do in certain situations. And yet, you know, we, we mainly can try to work on our own feelings and how how we see them. And then there are some other things we can do outside of that. But as, you know, people in recovery, um, managing our emotions and feelings is, you know, the general thing that, that we're working on um, so that we don't impulsively take a drink or use or whatever it is that we're going to do. And so um, I know that it, at one of our meetings um, this week or a meeting that I was in, the topic kind of came around to um, how we acted, uh, the things that we did in early sobriety to guard our new sobriety. You know, so like if we went to a, a party or something like that, you know, we'd uh, we'd uh, take a friend if we could or, or take our own, you know, beverage so that we didn't accidentally pick up somebody else's and uh, take our own keys and, and do these kind kind of things. And um, this person was relating that to to, she's uh, went out to a gathering of people because um, some of the the social distancing has loosened up in this area, and um, and that it was awkward for for everybody at first because they you know didn't quite know what to do, and so and so you know things are a little bit different out there. And then she she added that you know once people started drinking, which she was not one of them, um, that uh, then all of the social distancing protocol you know went out the window. <laughs> And so, and so, you know, hearing that, you know, one, it, it made me think of, you know, yeah, these are the things that I could do in early sobriety to, you know, protect my sobriety. Um, but now, you know, there are some of the things that I, I can't do to protect my health. And, and that, uh, you know, that got me to thinking of, about, you know, things in general. Um, and then also that um, I've had this experience, um, well, I've noticed in the last week or so that um, a couple of people are either not chatting with me as much that normally do or um, have actually said that they were um, they were a little bit concerned to share something with me and uh, because of um, afraid that I would I would judge them and uh, you know and my I hear that and I'm like me judge them what you know and then I think about it I'm like why would they say that and then I think about, you know, what I've, I've shared on here and shared, you know, with people in the, in the last, you know, few months. And, and yeah, they're probably afraid because I'm, I'm judgmental <laughs> and I've been judgmental with people regarding, you know, the pandemic and behaviors that, you know, that I think people should be doing. And, and what it's come down to is that, you know, I've realized how vulnerable I am. And within my own recovery, you know, in early recovery, there are th certain things that I can do. Um, that can safeguard that, that I can do on my own. And it's a choice, you know, for me to be, to be vulnerable in relationships or to do things. And that um, this has shown me how vulnerable I truly am and how much I have to depend on other people doing the right thing. And since I don't think other people will do the right thing, and um, then I want more controls and I want things, you know, people to, to do things as they're supposed to do or as I think they're prescribed or written. And um, and so therefore, yeah, I have been behaving in, um, in a way that's not congruent with how I want to behave. And so for me, it's, it's accepting that, yeah, that I've been, you know, kind of a judgmental ass to some people. I and that, yes, <laughs> no, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, you don't hear everything that comes out of my mouth, thank goodness. And, and thank goodness, everything I think doesn't come out of my mouth these days. <laughs> but I hear what you're saying. And I think that is acceptance because I've done the same thing. It's like a, a lot of times if, if I get feedback from somebody that's, you know, negative about me, mm -hmm. I, I don't like it when I hear it. I feel, I feel bad. Okay. <laughs> right. I feel bad initially, but, and I, I'm not bragging about myself, but this is something I've kind of conditioned myself to do. And it's just what you've done. I, I just say to myself, well, maybe they're right. Maybe my maybe my sense of reality isn't quite doesn't quite match with what really is going on here. And it just kind of forces me to kind of discharge the negative feeling and to stop and think about 
what that person has just told me about me. And then I can stop and I can assess it. I can take a look at myself to see if there is it. Well, what, what have I, why did I react this way? Is, is there some truth to it? Could I do something differently? And I kind of, I kind of just do a little inventory on it. I just go through the whole process. Uh, and, like how much of it's true. Cause you know, sometimes it is, sometimes it's not. And, and sometimes there's a little bit in there, but. Right. And sometimes it's like, it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. Know? Sometimes sometimes it does not matter. Yeah. Um, but it is, you know, something when, you know, I saw the acceptance thing that, that I have been working on or that thinking about. It. And that's the main reason I didn't want to talk about acceptance <laughs> is because I'm like, dang it, I'm, I'm struggling with it right now um, on the things that, you know, that I can do. What, what are the actions that I should be taking and, uh, and I know one of them is is looking at that and seeing how much is true and how much isn't. Um, uh, it also made me think of another thing because I, I like actual, you know, how to type stuff instead of you should just accept, you know, because um, it reminds me of the let go and let God. And I, I you know, don't do that either. Um, but um, when thinking about the principles, you know, and acceptance, uh, it, it mainly comes up, well, it comes up in a lot of places, but and the third step is one of the ones that they talk about acceptance. And so I was looking at Jeffrey Munn's book, and one of the things I like about his third step or what he talks about in there is that um, his suggestion is to write a statement or a pledge, you know, and it reminded me some of my uh, people that I've sponsored before um, have crafted um, theirs into a, a personal manifesto of, uh, of what they want, you know, their life to be or their mission in, in sobriety. And, um, and I'm like, well, maybe I should do something similar to that on how I want to behave regarding news or information during this pandemic, you know. How, how do I want, uh, how do I want to, to behave? You know, what is my commitment to um, responding to things that I don't like or that just strike me as, you know, um, as not right? Um, because, you know, of course, it depends on who you ask, whether it's right or wrong. Um, how, wh- what do I want to do? Um, and that maybe if I write some of that stuff out, um, that that will help me be able to, to act in that way and be more intentional and mindful about it. Um, and, uh, and then hopefully, you know, things will, will go better and, uh, and I won't have to work on acceptance as much. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, you know, it's interesting about this whole pandemic and how it's, it's affecting us. You know, I think it was on our, our first episode, our first sober distancing episode. And I made the comment that I was taking a walk and I said to myself, I don't ever want to accept this. I don't want to ever accept this as being normal. Mm. And Man, I really didn't. I didn't like I didn't like what the world had become. Um and I don't know where I'm at now, how I feel about it. I I'm almost kind of numb to it to a certain extent. Yeah. Um I do get angry with what I see going on on when I watch the television and so forth, but I've just kind of have settled in this routine of going through the motions of, you know, waking up, plugging my work laptop in sitting at my desk, <laughs> unplugging the work laptop, <laughs> you know, you know, it's just, you know, gotten, gotten to that. But I was, I was sharing, um, at a meeting last night, one of our online meeting with our group, and we just did sort of a check-in. We didn't really have a topic. We just checked in to see how people were doing. And the one thing that I, I did mention that is kind of bothering me, it seems like I'm getting tired of all of my interactions with human beings being through a screen. Mm. Um, and it's like, I'm, it's like the whole thing of the, the chopped up um, video, of the person talking to you, you know, it's like when I talk to my boss, you know, she comes in and out of the screen and her, 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 the audio comes in and out. And then, and then even when you watch television, you know, it's like some reporter is talking from his living room, you know, and it's like he's on a screen and then our AA meetings are on screens. And I don't know, it's not like, I, I mean, I have to accept that. That is what the reality is that we're living in. And and they told me a long time ago that acceptance doesn't mean you have to like it. Right. <laughs> right? <laughs> so that's just the deal. That's just the deal. But I am tired of that. Mm-hmm. And um, I don't know what to say about that other than it'll be nice when more of my interactions are, they, they, they don't have to be at such a distance, you know, whether it be, whether it be six feet or on the other side of a computer screen. Yeah. Well, but, that will be nice. Whenever that is. Whenever yeah. that is. Whenever <laughs> that is. 
But on the other hand, too, I have to admit, I'm very fortunate that, you know, I've, you know, I'm not sitting here alone. I've got I know, two cats, a dog and a wife. <laughs> <laughs> it, that, that was nice. The priority that you put them in. I'm sure, I'm sure your wife would appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. It's just, these are weird times. That's all there is to it. And they are. And, and being kind to ourselves, you know, is, is also another thing. Cause I know that, that other people, you know, have shared with me the ways that they're acting out, you know, and their anger can come out sideways. And, and by that, you know, I, I mean, kind of like, well, like Brene Brown's thing on blame, where she talks about that, you know, a series of events and she drops her coffee on the floor and she yells her husband's name and, you know, swears at him and he's not even there. Um, and it's it's basically, you know, that uh, the um, getting angry at something that has nothing to do with what you're really angry about, um, you know, the awareness of it or um mindfulness of it, I guess. Um, and so for, for me, it, it comes out as, you know, I'm, I'm angry at something and I'm working on somebody, something and my mom will come in to ask me a question and I might snap at her, you know? And so that's my, me talking about, uh, you know, my anger, frustration at stuff coming out sideways. Cause it has nothing to do with her. It, you know, has to do with me. And, uh, and yeah, I think that we're, a lot of us are experiencing that in various ways right now. And, and so to, to try to remember that, that, yeah, this is a stressful time and, uh, and that we're all trying to get through it the best we can and that we, you know, are fortunate that we have some tools that we know how to use, um, or that we're trying to learn how to use. <laughs> um, and, uh, and so, you know, we have that opportunity and we, we have a support system of other people, um, you know, and, and a great support system secularly now. Um, I'm really glad that, you know, I, I have um, people in secular recovery to be able to talk about this stuff with because, you know, I think this would be much more difficult um, if I didn't. And um, and so, yeah, so I have people I can talk to about it and say, yeah, you know, I, I behaved this way and I'm not proud of it. And I, you know, or, you know, somebody said I behaved this way, you know, <laughs> what do you think? And they're like, yeah, you did. <laughs> <laughs> and so then I can look at it, which, you know, sometimes is the case. Um, and uh, yeah, and be able to, you know, figure out where I am and all of that um, and, and be OK that, yeah, that. Um, this is a tough time and, and none of us are going to, to act in our best self, you know, the majority of the time or we can do the best that we can. And, and, uh, and that's an acceptance thing, you know, so. This might be a good time to let people know that they can call, you can call in if you would like to, um, to share your experience, thoughts, ideas, whatever about acceptance, we'd love to hear from you. The phone number is 844-899-8278. Well, I guess when I first started dealing with acceptance, when I, when I first think about it, I also think about it in terms of, I kind of equate it with understanding. So like if I go way back to the beginning, when I first started dealing with this, um, it would be step one. It, it was like when I, when I realized that I was an alcoholic, I was, I remember just being stunned that I was in denial for so long because I could look back and it should have been obvious to me that I had a problem that almost every serious problem I had pointed to my drinking. And I was just stunned that, that I, that I wasn't, that I was in denial. But when I came out of it, just from circumstances forcing me to, I guess that was my acceptance, but it was more, it was more an understanding that that is what, that I had that problem. We got a caller. All right. Good. This person is saving me from my rambling. How you doing? <laughs> yeah. Hi. Um, Am I live now? Yeah, you're you're on. Okay. Thanks. You're on. Okay. Thank you. I'm calling from Germany. <laughs> oh, wonderful. So it's a little bit late. Yeah. I must say I really like your show. Thank you. Your podcast is great. Um, yeah, you know, we don't have that much secular groups over here. I guess it isn't that much need over here because most people are not that much into the God stuff, but nonetheless, it's good to hear you. And yeah, that's, that's well, what I you. wanted to say. And about acceptance. Yes. What about acceptance? For me, acceptance and letting go, which is, I guess, more, more, more or less the same, or you can, um, 
you yeah you often can can hear them mentioned uh, you got to get let go or you got to accept i say um if i try to let go i often find myself that i try to get rid of stuff not really letting go and if i try to accept and then i'm starting to get greedy or really getting into the stuff so from my experience i cannot force acceptance i've just got to wait you know i i think sometimes it's it feels like um like a shortcut when it's presented as a shortcut and for me it definitely definitely isn't right that makes sense. It sounds to me kind of like um, attachment. So, you know, not try to get too attached to either, you know, how you think things should be or that um, that you shouldn't feel the way that you're feeling. So something in between. And I agree, too, that you can't really force acceptance. It's like I think that's what was driving me crazy when I was, you know, my first couple of years when people were telling me that, I just needed to accept things, you know, it's like, oh, well, yeah. <laughs> how am I supposed to do that? <laughs> but you're right. Yeah, it's, right. That's it. <laughs> it's just something that happens. If it hurts now, it hurts now. Yeah. And how could I accept anything that hurts, you know? Um, I, come and I can come to terms with it, and then perhaps then it's acceptance. For instance, when I was two years in sobriety, I really fucked up my life again, made a mess of my life. I, just um, was procrastinating and not making, not sending my invoices and not paying my bills. And then I almost lost my flat and it was a really tough time. And I was about close, very close to relapse. And then one day I thought, what is really the bad thing here? And even if I would go, uh, if I would have been thrown out of my flat, I could go back to my mother. And then it came to me, okay, I never had that big goals in my life, but going back to my mother with, at the age of 50 was not on my plan. Right. <laughs> and that made me feel, okay, you know, and I said, I really felt like a loser. And I said, okay, that's it. But, you know, the shit has happened. You, you've done this now and you will go through it. And then the acceptance came. But it is was not the acceptance is more of a result of a process. It's not the beginning of the process mm. to right. keep that in mind and try to stay open uh, for acceptance or letting go um, puts me in, uh, puts me in the position to be, to come to acceptance, but I really got to dig into the stuff and then the acceptance perhaps if I'm lucky will come. Well, that is interesting. So that's my experience. I made. Well, thank yeah. you. Thank you Thanks. for that. I appreciate it. And thank you so much for calling yeah. uh, all the way from Germany. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> thank you so much. It's good to hear yeah. from you. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. How cool. Well, that's kind of interesting when he said that acceptance isn't really the beginning of the process, but it's the result of a process. And now that I think about it, you know, that is probably true because, you know, if I, if I say that my first step was to accept or understand that I was an alcoholic, then there was certainly a process that happened because that didn't just happen overnight. Right. You know, there had to be some sort of a process going on with me. It was like probably listening to a lot of people. It was probably a long term. It was probably like, you know, at my first meeting, I probably was at the point where, you know what, I don't want to drink. But I, I, I don't know how much I think I didn't even care what you called me. I just didn't want to drink. And then it took me maybe, you know, maybe it took a little bit more time for it to sink in just what I was dealing with, you know? Um, and it wasn't just the drinking either. It was all the behaviors that under underlie all the drinking. It took several years of people telling you, you I mean, know, <laughs> 449. <Right. laughs> exactly. Exactly. Uh, yes. So people please call in. We, yes. we, we obviously need help with acceptance. So what do you to share with us yeah. uh, to help me work on acceptance? We might have a caller. All right. Hello. Hey, Jackie. Hey, Jackie. Hey, Jackie. How you doing? Not bad. How are you guys doing? All right. Are you accepting yeah. everything tonight? Yes. Uh, it's Just a pretty it acceptable. <laughs> it's an acceptable evening. Acceptable way to spend an hour, right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, reaching heights of mediocrity here in LA. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, 
yeah, yeah, you know, you know, I love you guys. I want to be a regular on the show, so I keep calling in. And um, I, yeah, I don't know. I just keep thinking of my, like, my Buddhist teachers with all this acceptance stuff. And, you know, like so much in AA, I feel like it, it boils down to semantics, right? Like, uh, John, when you were talking about when the pandemic started and you're like, I do not want to accept this. I will not accept this, right? And um, I, I'm thinking to myself, like, well, what is your, what are the other options, right? Like, and I, I don't know that acceptance means not having feelings. I think you might've even said that, right? It doesn't mean we don't have feelings. It just means maybe we can stop struggling, I want to say. I don't know. I just think it's like, uh, you know, like the comment I posted, you know, Buddhists really believe that we're born, once we're born, we're, we're born into suffering. I know it sounds kind of like a drag, but they feel like you can stop suffering by stopping desire. Meaning, uh, if I don't keep trying to change what is, uh, in other words, if I fall down and break my ankle. Right. Um, you know, like the your last caller was saying, uh, the pain is now. Um, and yes, I'm in pain. But if I don't accept that my ankle is broken and then go get it fixed, um, I'm going to cause myself more suffering. You know what I mean? Like I have to I have to accept that it, it is reality, you know. Um, yeah. yeah. Reality so I don't know. sucks. And, <laughs> yeah. Reality sucks. <laughs> yeah, my old shirt I had, reality, what a concept, right? Mm-hmm. And I think, too, you know, like, Andrew, you were talking about the uh, attachment stuff. And somebody told me years and years ago that if I get attached to compliments, I'm also going to get attached to criticism. And what if I took a neutral stance to what others thought about me? Oh. It'd be kind of better. But That's a thought. I, I haven't reached that yet. But, right, like, if we could just, if somebody says, oh, wow, I like your whatever you sounded great on that podcast right i could just say thank you i don't have to keep asking and grasping and well did you think it sounded good did you think you know what i mean right, right. like i could feel i could feel good about it whether or not you thought i was good at it do you yeah. know what i mean yeah I and, do. and then if i can if i can find a way to be neutral with that then if you tell me i sound like shit then i don't have to take that to heart either but anyway i don't know if attachment and acceptance are exactly the same but uh yeah, but we are human, and I do think it's it's hard. You know, I'm not a big big book person, but I um I was working with these young guys in the treatment center just this week, and it's these ten young men that all live together for sixty days after they get out of twenty eight day, right? And so, you know, they're always arguing about who's not doing the dishes or who doesn't have good hygiene, right? And I'm a mental health therapist, so I'm saying this is not about the dishes and it's not about the hygiene, right? It's always about something else. But I did pull out the big book the other day and read them that paragraph uh, on acceptance. And I, and mainly because the line after acceptance is the answer where it says, when I am disturbed, it is because I find some person, place, thing, or situation, some fact in my life unacceptable to me. Right. And so for me with these guys in early recovery, I'm saying, if someone doesn't do the dishes, like, do you really have to let it ruin your whole day? Right. <laughs> or do you have to take it pers- or do you have to take it personally because this one guy was like it's disrespectful to me. And it finally got down to where the guys were like, I'm not doing it to you. I'm not doing my chores just cuz I don't feel like doing my chores. But he was taking it like you're doing it to me. Oh. Yeah. So, wow, that is interesting. Yeah. I'm glad to see that uh, page 449 or 417 or whatever it is, is still getting good use today. <laughs> oh, oh, it does. <laughs> it does. Well, I mean, I, like I said, I'm not wedded to it, but you know, these guys are so young, young in recovery. It, it, it can be helpful. Yeah, it absolutely can. Cause like I was saying too, I was never thinking about anything like that. And it is, it's like a new thought. It's like, wow. Yeah. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a different way of thinking, you know? Um, so, and it is very helpful. That there usually are, there usually is something going on out externally that's kind of causing me to feel a certain way. And if I can stop and think about it, that's how you can begin to change whatever you're doing. Yeah. And if I am, a, if I am so attached to how you're acting and thinking and feeling, if my happiness is dependent on that, I'm just never going to be happy because I can barely control how I think and feel and act. <laughs> so if I'm all wound up in how you do it, 
you know, I just, yeah. So I do think it's a lot about letting go. But again, like, uh, like the callers in Germany said, you know, I completely believe for me, it's a process. It isn't a fucking magic wand, you know, like it sounds like it is in the big book or at these, you know, podium meetings. And it is a process and it hurts. Uh, but if I can accept or let go or just, you know, create some space, take a bubble bath, you know, like I feel better. So I'm not letting you control my inside. So anyway. Well, thank you for that. I appreciate it. That's a, that's, that's some good stuff to think about. You know, it reminds me of what I'm learning in smart recovery of it's kind of like um, cognitive behavioral therapy in a way. It's like you, it's like you, you stop to think about how your, how your, how your feelings turn into your actions, I guess. Um, How your thoughts and feelings can become actions. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and the whole idea is to to not let make that happen. I guess. <laughs> so maybe like the mindful pause. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly what I was going to say, Angela. <laughs> I, I knew yeah, it. we all have to I carry around it. a pause, but yeah, <laughs> you you read my mind. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, guys, thanks a lot uh, for let me rant and rave. I I love I love you, and I love the podcast, and uh, I'm going to keep coming back. LOL. Oh, thank you. Always nice to hear from you. <laughs> <laughs> talk to okay. you later jackie be, thanks be for well. coming <laughs> okay angela bye well that's some good stuff yeah definitely so I, I was kind of thinking about you know things that oh i've had difficulty accepting um there and it was basically things that i think I, let's put it this way i think it was easier for me to finally get to a, a point of acceptance when there was something when i could do something about it you know when there was something i could really change yeah you know i've had things in my life in sobriety that has happened that I can't change, you know, the Mm -hmm. death of a loved one, the death of a pet, you know, things like that. Or people that we care about who are ill yeah, um, or a terminal illness, things like that. Um, Yeah. And so those are particularly difficult when someone says, well, you just, you know, it's about acceptance. Like, well, you know, technically yes, but but it's very difficult, you know, because those are, are, are difficult feelings and uh, you know, and, yeah, I agree. It, it, it's a process. And I was thinking that, you know, the process for me seems to be, you know, when somebody tells me that, you know, I, I need to accept something because <laughs> my automatic is uh, don't don't boss me. Um, and so, you know, telling me to accept my my, you know, first inclination is no, I, I'm not going to accept that. Um, and then, uh, I have to go through the process. Um, and I, I, and I guess, you know, that, that I don't have to go through the process. I know for myself that I need to go through the process and make the choice to actually look at what's going on and, and what's in reality, because, you know, my, my choice is to, you know, look at reality and be as in, you know, be congruent in reality as much as I can. Um, and that's my choice because when I'm not, um, then I have the ideas of, uh, trying to, you know, be out of reality and, and use something to get there. And that's not what, what my choice has been, you know, that's not how I want to live my life. You know, I want to be, in balance, um, be able to accept reality and, and to move forward and, and to, to do that with as much integrity as I possibly can. So, um, so yeah, so I, I still, you know, don't care for reality most of the time, uh, even when it's good, uh, you know, and, and I think maybe it's part of my personality. I don't know, but, uh, reality in me just, you know, I'm, I'm always having to work on stuff. And yes, it is, it is human. <laughs> and, and maybe it's that, uh, I read too many, you know, fantasy novels as a kid or something. And, you know, and I, uh, I would like to be, you know, more than human and, uh, and, uh, you know, and I have to accept my humanness. Tell me this, Angela, do you think there's a difference between self-acceptance and acceptance of others? Um, you know, I, I think that, uh, that, yeah, there, there is a little bit. And I think acceptance just in general is, is, you know, in there as well. Um, you know, I, I, 
I think that right now in my life, I, I have pretty decent self-esteem, mm-hmm. you know? Um, yeah, there are things that pop up and, uh, and the, you know, and that what comes out is, is fear and, and then sometimes shame. And those are things that I know are, are triggers for me. Um, but I'm aware of them and I don't tend to sit in them for very long. And so accepting other people, um, the funny thing is, is I can accept them when I, when I can see them and see their humanness and see their, you know, um, their, I don't know, when I can empathize, um, and such, um, then I, I can accept, I can accept them. I can't always accept people's actions and behaviors very quickly because I seem to be able to separate them from their actions and behaviors. Um, But then I I get upset when they can't do that for me, (laughs) you know? So, yeah, so it's interesting. Um, yeah, it, it depends on, on what we're talking about too. There are certain subjects like, um, you know, in recovery, um, and people who are new, you know, I can accept, you know, certain behaviors and, um, and ideas and, and struggles that people have within recovery, um, better than I can, um, my friends that are outside of it, um, or just anybody that I see that's outside of it behaving in a certain way, you know, um, I, I don't like that as much, or I don't go to acceptance as easily or, or go to empathy as easily as I do with somebody in recovery. Tracy has a quote from, am I going to pronounce this right? Eckhart Tolle, T-O-L-L-E. If you can never accept what is, by definition, you will not be able to accept anybody the way they are if you can never accept what is by definition you will not be able to accept anybody the way they are got a caller area code 785 hello how you doing hi john this is brie oh brie good how are you doing oh great oh i'm so glad that you called long time listener first time caller (laughs) (laughs) yeah short time listener first time caller uh you'll get a t-shirt no, what, oh yeah, there you go. T shirt. It's on the way. It's on the way. T shirts. Okay. <laughs> I want a t shirt. Anyway, you know, I found uh, acceptance is uh, for me is uh, equal to um, serenity. In other words, the amount of uh, the amount of energy I put into acceptance often equals the amount of serenity I get out of this situation. Mm, okay, that sounds like that. That sounds like there's something from the big book that says something about that, isn't there? That the amount. There's something in there. I can't remember what it is, but it's like there's um, there, oh, it's like some sort of equation. Do you know what I'm talking about, Bree? I kind of remember it. You know, like I said, you know, I don't read the big book a lot. You know, like never. Right. You know, <laughs> I don't read it I anymore read, either. Uh, I read how it works because I think it's wonderful. I think it's a great piece of literature. Uh-huh. But uh, you know, I've always I didn't really believe that. Yeah. Until I found this uh, agnostic group, I you know, and somebody in the agnostic group said it's probably Jenny, you know, or maybe Greg Gage or Greg Gunn, you know, someone like that. But I found it to be quite probably Greg Gage. But I found it to be quite true, you know, when I it just uh, if I accept the situation, I cannot change. And I've tried every, I've worked around the problem every angle I can. Once I accept that, you know, my serenity is better. And sometimes just accepting that, I find the solution to the problem. Bree, I used Google and I and I, I came up with that quote from the big book that that's reminding me of what you're saying. It's my serenity is inversely proportional to my expectations. The higher my expectations of other people are, the lower is my serenity. I can watch my serenity level rise when I discard my expectations, but then my rights try to move in and they too can force my serenity level down. So it's like expectations and acceptance. I think kind of go together. That's another um, another thing with Eckhart Tolle that uh, I recall hearing him speak about about being frustrated and angry, and that it often has to do with our expectations of how we think something should be. So, like if there's a long line that you know, and we don't think there should be one, you know, we tend to get frustrated. Or if people behave a certain way in traffic, you know, they're you know going outside of our expectations, and so we get frustrated <laughs> and behave, you know. Less than 
than uh, ideally. But yeah, that's that was what my thoughts too when you guys were talking about it was that it you know it's it has to do with expectations. And the funny thing is, most of the time I don't think that I'm not aware of my expectations. You know, I I don't think that I have any. I'm I'm not aware that I expected you know, the TSA line to, to go a certain way and that people would move through it quickly or something until I'm sitting there impatient because, you know, somebody didn't, you know, bring out the water bottle and stuff that they had. So, yeah, so it's, it's interesting. And if I'm not accepting something, it's often because I have an expectation that it should be different than, than, the, than what it really is. And so I'm just, it just bothers me so much, you know, that it's not what's happening is not the way it should be. Exactly. <laughs> and you're yeah. right. The more, the more that I can put into just accepting and letting what be, be the more, the more serene I am, I suppose. I like that. That's, I, that's a good one, Bree. You are correct. Yeah. And I, and I just learned that when I came up here to be agnostic so that if for some reason it broke out of the rust of the cogs of my gears in my mind, mm. you know, for 24 years, it like said it, that idea sat there in my mind. But then <laughs> somehow I heard it in the in, uh, agnostic meeting. I think a lot of it was, it wasn't chained to that idea. Let go, let God. Right. You know? Mm. Right. Yeah. And hearing the acceptance equation in that light, you made it, you know, because the language of science is equation. You know? Right. Right. Uh, mathematics. And right. they're really healthy. Yeah. You know, comprehend that. So I just thought I'd call that in case it might help someone else. Well, thank, thank you, you for Bree. the podcast. I Appreciate really enjoy it. it. Oh, thank you for calling. It's so nice that it's so nice to have people from Kansas City listening to the podcast. <laughs> I just love that. Yeah, so this is from the Kansas side, you know. I know, it's Kansas side. That's cool. I like Kansas. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Bye bye. Bye bye. How nice. Yeah, I was saying that that Jackie can verify that that nobody from Boise uh, listens well i guess one did <laughs> at one time but but she's she's not a part of the group so nobody from the boise aa listens uh yeah they got tired of me years ago so um <laughs> and we were chatting about that the other night um at the end of the meeting a few of us were left um as people were leaving and and uh somebody asked something about the the podcast and uh and somebody who's known me um you know for over I think 12 years is like, you were on a podcast or you're doing a podcast? <laughs> I'm like, yep, yes, I am. You know what cracks me up about that call from Brie is that as soon as she mentioned that, I knew there was something in the big book, you know, and I, I just couldn't, I just couldn't, I just couldn't grab it. But, you know, that damn big book, you have to understand, I read that, I read that book. I've read it more than any other book in my life. And I'm not proud of that, but that's just what happened to me. <laughs> That's right, just, no. that's what was forced upon me, you know? And so it's like, there's still little things that rattle around, around in my brain and I might hear something in the world. I think, Hmm, I've heard that before in the big book, <laughs> you know, it's like weird, but yeah, that's kind of a good one though. I have to say, um, there are some good little paragraphs from the big book occasionally, you know, you can draw something good out of it. And that, that's, that, that little one is a, it's pretty good, I think. Yeah. Yeah. No, he, he did plagiarize some great things. So. Yes, he did yeah. plagiarize. <laughs> yeah, there's, you know, I'm actually reading the book now about the big book. Yes, the, the, the big book that's about the big book. Yeah, yeah. and, and I've, I've like only like two chapters into it. And the thing about that book is it's really intimidating because it's huge, but it's like it's got like 300 pages of citations you, know, you don't really have to read. And the book is just big. I mean, it's just like, I think they did it big on purpose. Like they did the big book, you know, it's got bigger pages or whatever. Right. So anyway, I'm like two pages into it. And it's like the big book was written from what I understand now. It was like, it was, it was all part of the mate, the big plan that Bill had for like, you're going to have a book, you're going to have uh, missionaries, you're going to have hospitals and we need to have people that are going to fundraise to, for this thing. And that's what the big book was starting off to be. It's like part of that major plan. Yeah. But I, I've, like I say, I'm only two chapters into it. <laughs> kind of interesting. So anyway, back to acceptance. <laughs> yeah. It looks like there's someone from Ecuador who's having a hard time calling in. Oh, so. really? I yeah. wonder why. I don't know. It is a toll-free number. And maybe it doesn't work everywhere. You know, I don't know why that is, but it seems like some parts of the world you can't do certain things. I don't know why. I don't know. Do they why. have to do like maybe a zero one? Maybe. I don't know. 
Maybe you have to, I don't know. I really don't know. I'm sorry. Did they make it? Did they leave a message in our, and on the chat room? I love to think that there's people in other countries that are listening. That is so cool. That's so nice. Yeah, it is nice. <laughs> what a small world we live in now. Yes, it is. But it, 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 one of the nice things is that, you know, um, should we ever need to um, flee as refugees, <laughs> we now have people around the world that will hopefully take us in. I would hope so. I would sure hope so. Well, thinking about this also, I would say that I, this is what it's in the little notes I wrote before the before the podcast. I kind of came to a conclusion that acceptance isn't the answer to all my problems, but it's sometimes necessary to understand the problem, which I equate with acceptance, so that I can take the action that I need to make the necessary change. And almost anything that I look at um, since I've been sober, any kind of a problem that I'm I'm encountering. The, my first thing that I need to do is just admit that this is there's a problem, and then I need to try to understand understand the problem, I guess, or accept the problem. I kind of equate understanding with accepting for me. Well, yeah, you know, I guess you can't truly accept something if you don't understand it. Yeah, and I also kind of I use understanding and replacing for I replace belief for understanding too. So I don't really care about what I believe. It's more important to me what I understand. It's kind of weird. It's just no, weird. I mean, yeah, I think I think language is important. That's, you know, one of the main reasons why a lot of us started secular groups True. <laughs> was because a langu- language is important. True. That's true. Oh, yeah. By the way, I was reading that story last night, um, Dr. Alcoholic Addict, and I, I, can't, I didn't remember it being quite so bad, but there's a lot of God <laughs> stuff in there. A lot of God stuff in there. And he says some things that, I mean, are like a little bit odd, like, you know, um, nothing happens in God's world by mistake. You know, I don't know about that. Yeah, I, I think that there was a, a woman in, in one of our um, secular meetings who talked about changing that um, a little bit. And so rewriting it in a way that that is more open. And I, I think just I think they may have just said nothing happens in this world, um, which you know, is an easy way to say that. Um, and then it can change, you know, cause yeah, it, it, when, you know, I hear somebody say nothing happens in God's world, I'm like, okay, so which God and, uh, you know, and, and stuff like that. So I get totally off, you know, the actual subject that someone wants to talk about because, you know, I, because of semantics. Jackie says, and I kind of agree with her. She says her least favorite saying is everything happens for a reason. See, I kind of feel like that. I, I, and, and, and for me, it's not a bad thing, but it's like, you know, in this universe that we live in, there's black holes. They got these quasar things that can blow up and wipe out our solar system. I mean, things, things happen you know? <laughs> and there's no reason for it. They just happen. You know, yeah. Some, some, well, and also, I, I think when people say that everything happens for a reason, it, it kind of minimizes whatever's going on for people, um, and, uh, and you, which usually isn't isn't very helpful at all. Um, just you know, yeah, everything happens for a reason. Um, well, you know, technically, I guess everything happens for a reason because of you know inertia and uh, I don't know evolution, um, stuff like that, but. Uh, it seems like within, you know, recovery or, or how I choose to look at it is is more of that, you know, we we create meaning out of whatever is going on and that, you know, and that I've learned that I can I have some choice in how I choose to look at a situation uh, to create meaning from it. So but yeah, I really have had a hard time when when people would say things that uh either everything happens for a reason or that, you know, they got a God shot or, you know, something along those lines as if, um, you know, something. So like um, when, you know, when the the woman said that, uh, you know, this whole thing of another woman having to be murdered, that it was almost her um, because God wanted her to get sober, you know, that kind of everything happens for a reason, you know, I'm like, well, you know, I don't know that that, you know, that that idea works for me. Um, but, uh, you know, that maybe all of those things happened and, and, you know, it was an impetus for you to get sober. Um, you know, that's an easier way for me to think about it rather than, you know, all of these terrible, horrible things had to happen or, you know, uh, in order for somebody to get sober. Um, yeah, it, it just, uh, it doesn't jive, jive well for me as well. Do you see MSWM 
Nana's comment up there. And I think this is a good point. She says she likes the she likes the big book and reading out loud in meetings helped with neuroplasticity of her brain recover. I actually accept the underlying principles found in the book. It's flawed like all writings. Now she's not alone in that. I mean, there's there are some people in my home group that surprise me that they like the big book. I mean, they don't they don't like maybe all the language in it, but like like she points out, they do like the underlying, you know, principles within the book. I think that the only reason I have a problem with it is because it was it was it was such a big huge part of my life for 25 years and when I finally kind of broke free from the language of that book and started speaking a little bit differently people started using the book to to prove me wrong to put me in my place and oh man and so I I just kind of it, it, it gave me a really bad feeling about it. And it, and it, and it was, it, I almost had to recover from that. Um, and I'm still kind of coming to terms with that big book. And I, and, and like she says, there's nothing wrong with the book. It's how people use it. And that's what was wrong. You know, my current understanding is that the book was written uh, to be read by people who couldn't be at meetings. And so it, it, you know, it, to me, it seems odd that we're reading a book in meetings that's meant to be for people who can't get to meetings. True, that's true too. <laughs> you know, um, and that it, you know, it, that you know, people created it into a canon and and all of that. You know, I I think that it it has its place and is is useful. Um, but and I understand the neuroplasticity of of reading out loud. Um, but I think that. You know, for me, some of the things that are written in there are no longer true or helpful um, to somebody who is, you know, in this century, you know, or this this age, um, and uh, particularly who's, you know, women or of, uh, you know, things like that. You know, so I, I do think that for a historical document that it's used to you, yeah, you know, it can be used for that. Um, and that it's useful in that context. Um, I just uh, see it used in a lot of other ways and um, used to shame people or to get them into submission or, you know, um, yeah. Um, so there are some useful things out, out of it. We've shared some of those tonight. Um, but um, maybe someday we should do an episode about the big book. Maybe we should have someone on who loves the big book. <laughs> someone, someone who doesn't like it. I don't know. Yeah, could be. And, and like Robert says down there, um, he says that, you know, he says it's flawed. He says it works for a lot of people. But the thing is, it's a document for its time. It was, re- you know, when it was written, it really wasn't meant for for us in the 21st century. Oh, we got a caller. We'll make, take this call. Saving me from my uh, meandering, blathering yeah. thoughts. How you doing? Good. It's Maria from the Sober She Devils. Oh, Maria. Hey, Maria. Oh, it's so nice to hear from you. Sober She Devils. Howdy. Maria, you don't have an opinion on anything, do you? <laughs> Acceptance is the key. Um, actually, you know, I wanted to say something that hasn't been brought up. There's been a lot of great uh, comments from the previous uh, folks that have called in, but something that really helped me um, earlier on in my recovery with regard to thinking about acceptance was really embracing that acceptance doesn't mean agreement. And that was huge for me because (laughs) there's so many things in life that I have to accept that I don't agree with. And, you know, I'm not going to elaborate, let your imaginations run wild. Okay. (laughs) But that was, that was, that was definitely a game changer for me was coming to understand that just because I have to you know, accept the things that I cannot change doesn't mean that I agree with the things that I cannot change. And anyway, I thought I'd offer that up. Yeah, no, it is good. That's very true. There's a lot of things going on that I can't change that I don't like and I don't have to agree with, I guess. But it's just like it's the reality that we live in, you know, like this pandemic, this all of this crazy stuff that's going on in our world today. It's just the reality that we live in. But, you know. As Angela said, we're lucky that we do have this each other. We have this connection with each other. You know, we're doing what we what we can do. Absolutely, absolutely. The other thing, the other thing about acceptance for me is, you know, um, the opposite of uh, just brings me so much pain and so much anxiety and you know resistance to what is. 
you know, I, I liked what Angela was talking about um, with regard to reality, because I believe myself to be a realist. And when reality is um, smacking me around, I do much better to accept than to resist because, you know, what they say in the movies, resistance is futile. <laughs> there's, there's no point for me. I have, the sooner I come to a place of acceptance, the less I suffer. So anyway, you guys, thanks so much for um, all of the effort uh, that, you, that you put into this and, you know, taking, taking time out of your day um, to offer this to our secular community. I personally really appreciate it. So thank you. Oh, thank you, Maria. Yeah. Thanks, Maria. Good to hear from you. Appreciate that. So this is amazing. <laughs> We were actually able to take up an hour talking about acceptance, which is really nice because that means we didn't have to talk about service work. <laughs> but someday we will. We'll do an episode on service work. I mean, I've got, I've got some, I've got some strong feelings about that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so many things. But anyway, next week we were inspired so much by Sam uh, coming on talking about teachers in recovery. Next week we're going to have, um, I believe Richard S is his name. We'll be on talking about doctors and recovery. Right. So, yeah. So yeah. that'll be fun. And specifically, you know, in this time as well. Because, yeah. you know, it, I hadn't really thought about that, like with the teachers, you know, what they're going through, you know, being in recovery in general is, you know, is, as we all know, something we have to practice at and work on. And, and, um, but during this, you know, um, this difficult time, um, they face a whole nother set of challenges. And so I'm excited to, to, um, to hear from him and what his experience is, not only, you know, just because I, I'm not familiar with it, um, but also um, so that we can know, uh, those of us in recovery, how we can be more supportive of people in healthcare that are in recovery right now. Yep. I think that's, that'll be super interesting. So I'm looking forward to that. So everybody, thank you very much, everyone. Angela, thank you. I couldn't have done this without you. Thank you, John. Thank you, everybody who is listening and commenting on the Facebook and YouTube and for calling in. We could not do this. You made this happen, this episode. Believe me, um, I had a few notes scribbled down. I had no idea what I was going to talk about. <laughs> so that's it. We did it. That's another episode of AA Beyond Belief, the podcast. And there's our outro music. Yes. So if you've ever thought about supporting our site and podcast, you can do so by just a small contribution, monthly contributions uh, through our Patreon page at patreon.com slash AA Beyond Belief. You can also donate through PayPal at paypal.me slash AA Beyond Belief. Just go to our website, aabeyondbelief.org, and click on the donate button. It really does help. Um, we're getting more patrons on, uh, on Patreon, and that's really so nice. Small donations like a dollar, even $5 a month help out a lot. So anyway, thanks a lot, everybody. This has been a lot of fun. Like I said, we'll be back next week talking about doctors and recovery. Until then, you all take care and be well.